Hello, and welcome to the Knit Girls. <laughs> welcome to my knitting. <laughs> I'm Laura, also known as Lala, and it's episode 425. Now I'm all off. Yeah. It's Baby Alligator Day, y'all. It's like a national holiday in my life. Um, this show actually has two hosts. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I, I don't know if that's relevant or not. <laughs> Uh, I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. You're not a baby alligator, so you're not relevant to my life today. And today is January 31st, 2019. Baby alligator day. It is baby, baby alligator, alligator day. Baby alligator day was the same day last year. Oh. Exact same date. So baby alligator day is the day that uh, a nature center comes to Laura's school with baby alligators. Deb from the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fishing, and Game, mm. something like that. Um, she also works with the Jackson Museum of Natural History. She brings, um, she talks to the kids about adaptations, and she brings turtles, and there's, like, land turtles, which have the rounded shells so they can go inside. Right. Also, they do, like, a hibernation, I learned something new today. They do, like, a hibernation thing. It's not called hibernation. Um, and turtles basically just, land turtles just kind of live in their shell during the winter months, which makes total sense. But they were in my 75 degree library today. And they were like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, they're like, they like try to crawl on the side of the containers to escape. They like, the longer they're in there, the more active yeah. they get. Um, it's the same with the baby alligator. So tomorrow, I did not hold the baby alligator today because there was too much going on. But tomorrow, the baby alligator will be more active because it's been warm. Oh. Which is the best time to touch a baby alligator. That's what I want when he's feisty. <laughs> We don't know if it's a he or a she. Oh. I could go into details of... How they determine that? Yes, I could, but I'm not going to. Oh, thank you. My kids, like, they get to ask her questions at the end, and nine times out of ten, it's, um, today was, how do alligators use the bathroom? How do, <laughs> how do they don't they? actually have a bathroom, but they have one hole. And so then that went into, they have interior sex organs, and... So everything comes out the one hole. Yep. Hmm. Fascinating. Now you've you've learned something. The more new. you know. The more you know. If I was any good with animation, I'd make a rainbow come out of your hand. <laughs> that would be amazing. But sorry, <laughs> I'm so disappointed. I already have like ten jobs. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. If you were Amy Florence, there would be a rainbow. Right this is now. true, but she's a better human than me. I don't know what to tell you. Aww. Um. So knitting. Would you like to start, or would you like me to? Um. You can. St I'm in the round, so I. I'm trying to think. Do you have an FO? I don't have an FO, but I have lots of spinning. Well, show your name. Do you have an FO? And then, no, I don't have, I have one thing. Okay. I can talk a little bit about the weaving that I've been working on, but. I like how aggressive you were with that. I have one thing. That was super aggressive. Like, okay. I, I'm appreciative that I'm making good progress on this, but it's also kind of boring that I've only been okay. working on one. Well, I have two things that I'm actively, <laughs> I'm going to laugh at actively working on. Um, but, okay, so the first thing that's being worked on, and I'm just about to bind off in a half row, is the second sock for the Desert Vista Dye Works, um, sock of the month thing that she does. All the details are in her Ravelry board. This is just a plain stuck in a toe-up, Wendy Johnson, um, sock with gusset and that's a free pattern on her website and she actually has on her website like all the numbers mm -hmm. for different stitch counts too because she's awesome but her books if there's i think they're out of print but if you can find them are also really really good um so this is being knit on size zeros and it has to be done in postage night so i'm right there i'm a last minute lucius but i'm right there um so that's almost done, and that's being kept in my Magical Unicorns Amy Beth bag. And tomorrow, I'm taking with me to work um, the Strawberry Shortcake colorway, mm. and I'm going to start that. But I have to take a picture. I have to rewind it because Leslie jacked it up. And then <laughs> I need to... Uh, she's doing me a favor. And then I need I still to... still it up. Yeah, you did. Well, I think that ball winder is just a jerk. I have a tug electric ball winder and it, it's very fiddly and we sent it back to see if like it could get fixed and they fixed it and they sent it back and it's better. 
I think it just it doesn't like us. I don't know that there's anything wrong with it. And it could be my setup is like the distance between my Swift it's kind and of it. Up and then away. Yeah, might be not workable, but like there might be a better way of doing a setup. But in my life right now, I can't figure that out. Yeah. Like I can't rearrange furniture in that room, in my studio room. But I think I might try. Oh, I gave that to mom. I had like two Ikea tables that were the same height um, for winding before, but then I gave one to mom because I was like, I'll just put the winders on the my desktop. So maybe I need to purchase two like level, like things that are the same level or figure that out. I don't know. I'll figure it out another day. Until then, I'll just keep winding stuff at Leslie's house. And then I brought Even Star because it's going away again. Because um, one of the things that talk about in the Harry Potter House Cup is crafting your happiness. And this is not making me happy. It's not bringing me joy. And so I'm going to put it back away for a while. So I'm not going to complete an owl this term. Um... Which is sad, but also, like, I'm in the mood to knit some sweaters while it's cold, and not in the mood to knit intricate beaded lace. So I think it'll come back out during Stash Dash, but it's going to go away again for a little while. Um, which is fine. That's allowed. I'm keeping good, really good notes with it, so it'll be alright. So this is Even Star. Um, I am right there I'm like 64 percent done Is that's that what one? it was yeah. when we looked it up yeah. yep so it's 64 percent done um which is 13 percent more than it was prior to christmas so at this rate in four more years i'll get it done <laughs> so um i'm not gonna get my feelings hurt over not completing it it just needs, it needs more brain space than I have available right now. Like, what is that? Running, like, is it RAM? Bandwidth. That, yeah, or bandwidth. Bandwidth. Then, um... It's like how big the pipe is. Okay. For going back and forth. Yeah. Um, it needs more than I can give it right now. So I'm going to put the beads in there now, and I'm going to put it back in its little very cute chicken boots bag and it's got a sit sprite flock lock on it from Jelby. oh what is it? like is that the flock lock it is i'm yeah. just curious as oh, to what a soot the... sprite a what sprite a soot sprite s o o t okay from um all the misera is it miserahi the japanese animator who does like my friend's um kiki's delivery service and totoro and um i know Mizrahi is Isaac Mizrahi. No, I thought, that's wrong then. That's not right in my head. Um, he did Howl's Moving Castle and all those. Mm, okay. Anyway. So it's based off an author. <clears throat> A book. Um, an animator. Oh, okay. The Howl's Moving Castle is a book, but there's a movie. Have you not seen that movie? Have you seen Kiki's Delivery Service? Nope. Oh, you make me sad. Uh, Totoro is my favorite. But anyway. Oh, is that how you say it? I've seen that before. Maybe. I just you know, it was with Totoro. me and pronounce, pronunciation. I, I don't know. I mean. It's kind of a mixed bag with how I say things sometimes. So that's going away for a while. And maybe it'll come back out. But I'm giving myself permission. It's a that it's not making me happy right now. And I don't, I can't, I just can't right now. Um, and next up on my needles, I'm trying to choose between three sweaters for this. I told you, it <laughs> my ball winder ate this and I had to kind of like hand wind, um, <laughs> very sad way. I might fix this if I finish the sock while, well, you know, when I have other time. Um, so I have seven skeins of Brooklyn Tweet Quarry. And I'm trying to decide, I'm going to knit a sweater for, in the month of February, and I'm trying to decide if I want to make it one of three sweaters. I don't really like any of the options you picked. <clears throat> it's not my sweater, though. So. And Leslie doesn't like anything that I picked. So I am trying to choose between the Carabeth cardigan, um, Hohe's bulky 
the is it easy bulky? Easy, bul- easy, easy or bulky easy it's bulky the easy one. one bulky. Okay. Or um, Avalanche by Heidi Kiermaier, which I think is what it's going to become. But that involves cables, which are not my favorite. And I'm not certain how cables are going to look in this yarn because it's a two-ply. Is it? No. It's like a one-ply. It's not. It's a three-ply, actually. Oh, yeah. so it might do okay. But it is reading as like a single, um, a three-ply woolen spun. Now, is this an Aran or a Bulky? It's a Bulky. Oh, I thought it was an Aran. Um, and then I looked up, like, different patterns knit out of this yarn, like, mm-hmm. um, to see if there were any others that might pop up, but nothing that really And I like all of the fancy. patterns individually. I'm just trying to think <clears throat> of things that I see Laura wearing. And she's not a pullover person, really. She wears cardigans far more frequently than she does pullovers. Mm-hmm. So... Of the options, I think Carbeth is probably the best, but it's not my sweater, so <laughs> she can knit whatever Leave she me wants. Alone. Yep. So that's it for me and knitting right now. But you've made really good progress. I'm unpacking my bag as I talk to you because I have my giveaway stuff. So. Ah! I haven't even gone through and picked stuff yet. Well, I'm gonna put this over here to talk about in a bit. I just have lots of stuff in my lap and everywhere. There's not good places to put things right now. I'm going to set it right down here so I remember to talk about it. Excuse or not. Me. All right. I'm going back to knitting now. Um, so I I think Laura oversold me a little bit on the progress that I've made. I want to see your progress pig. That's not a pig. Um, yeah, I don't know where my pig is. I'm going to have to find him. Or I got that gorgeous um, confetti yeah. one from Tilting Planet. We could totally order some more. She's got little pom-poms, and she's got super cute stuff. So this is the wrought iron um, pullover. This is by Anna Johanna. It is intarsia in the round, which is sort of a misnomer. It's still knit back and forth. It's There's no in the round, really. It's just on circular needles, and it's joined together. Um, so this was where I was two weeks ago. And this was where I was last week. So I've made about three inches um, of progress knitting and watching RuPaul. And um, I started binding off, and then I realized I had a half hour left to go before I could bind off. The Titan Games. Yeah. And some other things over at Laura's house. Weekends, usually Saturday and or Sunday, depending on how lazy we are. Um, we both try to get in several hours. Project of Runway also. Yes. Um, because I don't know about Laura, but for me, if the option to just nap and read is there, uh-huh. that's going to be what I'm going to go with. I try to craft for a couple hours every night. As long as I don't have, like, well, the podcast counts as crafting yeah. in my mind. Like, when we record a podcast, I'm knitting, so I count that as crafting. Um, but I try to craft for at least two hours a night. I've been watching The Masked Singer, too, but Leslie won't watch it with me. I and it's mainly because my kids are watching it yeah. and they want to discuss. Like, we had to have a whole conversation today about who Margaret Cho was. Mm. That's who was... Oh, I'm sorry if I spoiled... That was last week, though. Hopefully I didn't spoil it for anyone. I haven't watched last night's yet. So, or uh, Cheech and Chong yeah, a couple weeks told ago. told me about that, yeah. So we have to have conversations about who these people are if they're not familiar which is interesting too um this is knit out of two colors of knitter's nightmare this is seascapes and i think this is like gray days or something i can't remember what the colors were she's not dying anymore anyway so it's not like you can um request it um or at least she's not for a while i I don't know if it's permanent she had a baby yeah little linus and he seems to be, he's finally he's home from the hospital. He's doing well. I get a couple pictures sometimes, and I got Aww. one yesterday where he was smiling. Aw. Um, did she get her package She yet? did. Oh, good, yeah, good. She said she'll send pictures as she has time to, like, put him in the things. Yes. And I'm like, that's okay. I'm not going to demand <laughs> that you, like, wake a sleeping baby and try <laughs> on clothes. Like, I, I've had a But baby. if it was my sleeping baby... <laughs> 
<laughs> or if I was babysitting said sleeping baby, I would totally do that. Yeah, well. Um, I really am digging how this is coming out. I would like to have this done for Madrona, which is in two weeks. And you can do it. I think that that's possible depending on if I end up like. On Sleeve Island, as Amy Well, the worst it. comes to worst. We can block the body. Mm-hmm. And then you could be knitting the sleeves on the plane. Because I'm going to be beside you on the plane. Well, so I, I could just if you're... block the body and wear it as a sleeveless thing until... That's true, too. Um, because it's it's flat. Like, there's no stitches on holders or anything at the sleeves. You pick up and do set-in sleeves. So Or you could wear it with one sleeve. Could not the other. It'd be very trendy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I really, really like this. I would like to for it to be finished already so I could wear it. Yeah. I've been wearing a lot of knitting this knits it's this week. It's actually been cold here this week. I've worn um, my Cypress, which is a sort of pullover vest thing from Super cute. Jared Flood. I've worn my Nubum that Shonita knit for me and all which, the ladies that knit night were envious. Yes. I was super jealous of it. I wore a hat that Tangerine Designs made for me. Um, a Feral hat. And a knit or I wore um, a cowl. A simple ribbed cowl I made out of some tempted yarn a while back as well. I've been wearing a lot of knits because it's, it's been cold. Mm. Well, it's been Mississippi cold. Which is like 20 degrees. Yeah. yeah it's not near what, like, Chicago. Like, and negative temperatures and any of that. I mean, it's cold, but it's... And it's not the coldest we typically get because last year my pipes froze. Yeah. It was because they don't insulate ho- houses down here like they do yeah. in the east. So we don't get, like, northeast. extended periods of cold, so... Um, at least not like they do up north in the northeast especially but yeah so this is this is the entirety of my um, crafting with the exception of I got a wolf pup um, uh, which is a, a, a loom a floor loom with four shafts and um, I spent I calculated it I started taking notes of when I was working on yeah. like my first warp, um, getting it on the loom, and including the time it took to measure out the warp, uh huh, and then um, do all the cross ties and everything, and then tie the warp to the front beam because I did it front to back, uh huh, thread through. I'm sorry, slay, slay, slay the reed. That's an awesome weaving term. Reed? Yeah, the one that moves back and forth with the beater. I think that's the reed. Tendon reed. Yeah. Sounds Slay the reed. Like, that sounds right. Mm-hmm. And then thread the heddles, uh-huh. which are the, the parts that go up and down um, that create the opening, which is called the shed, where the, the bobbin goes through. And then tying it on to the back apron bar and then combing, like straightening out all the threads holy crap that took like three hours in itself just straightening the threads out and winding it on uh-huh uh all together it took 10 hours to warp that loom yeah that's a lot um what are you making on it just some simple tabby towels like um very simple weave like up down yeah simple shaft mom weave. said when she's here on the 14th she'll help you warp it again so you should totally take her up on that yeah no definitely i want to get then. better um it took 10 hours but that was also the first time i've ever warped a multi-shaft loom and it was a brand new loom and i was learning what all the parts were and what they yeah. did and you know ideally it will go faster in time i i hope so um but and there's multiple colors, so that had some effect on yeah. it as well in the complexity of, of measuring things out. So um, There's some gorgeous weaving in House Cup. There's some gorgeous weaving just in the different groups on Ravelry. So I really want to get better at it. I finally got it warped, and I started, I wove just like a, a hem uh-huh. just to, to get it started. And now I've got to load up the bobbins that go into the shuttle so that, you know, I can weave back and forth. 
So gotcha. there's so much prep work that goes into weaving. There is. It's unbelievable. Which is why I struggle to motivate myself to weave at all because yeah. there's so much prep work. I mean, once you get that done, the actual weaving does go fast, but it it is some serious work to get a floor loom or any warped. loom warped. Yeah. So um anyway, hopefully I will have some progress on that. I really doubt it'll be done next week, but maybe I'll have some pictures to show. Yeah, we should do um, when you feel more comfortable with it, we should do a small video yeah. so that people can see that loom compared to some other looms. Yeah. Not that we have other looms to compare it against. I mean, but... I have an AVL 40 inch that Laura's mom gave me, but it's still, like, there's still so many things on it that I don't know what they do or how to adjust them. So yeah. that's, you know... We just need to connect my mom and keep her for like a month. I would be happy with that arrangement. She probably would be too. <laughs> well, she'd have to bring her um, quilter. Long arm. Her long arm with yeah. her. That's She got rid of a 40 inch loom, so she got a long arm mm -hmm. sewing machine to replace it. She immediately it. filled that space. <laughs> yeah. But she had been plating that for a long time, so yeah. it wasn't like a spur of the moment thing. She's um, doing a lot of quilting. She's doing some quilting for our friend Gwen yeah. right now. All right, anyway. so you have some spinning. I do, and I have two stitches left to oh, cut off. Oh, okay. So, but that's fine. Give me one second, Look at you, second, you're going to have an FO. Right in time for the FO segment. <laughs> Laura's so smooth. I'm something. She I doesn't don't even know. know. smooth is the word. Boom. Awesome. Oh that's look, pretty. it's a half in another color. That, <laughs> that's for you, Ashley. Oh, I'm sorry if that drives y'all nuts. It doesn't drive <laughs> me nuts, so you know it is half in another color always. <laughs> it's your signature, man. Ugh, something, my inability to do things correctly. Yay, fo! Yay, fo! Yay for getting some imaginary points and getting. 10% off a yeah. Desert Vista Dye Works order, as long as I remember to post that. Yay for meeting a goal you set for yourself. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of goals, I did finish two skeins, one of which is a giveaway. Um, the other one is missing its tag, but I do have what it is. So, this is the November Club from It's Been Farm. She does bats. I'm it's guessing crab it's around apple, I think. three ounces. Yep, it's crab apple tree. Um, it's 215 yards of a woolen spun two ply. And I'm pretty happy with it. Um, this was spun on Leslie's flat iron, which I'd never spun on before. So new to me wheel. Um, I was testing out Acre Works, sent a new bobbin for me to try. Um, I'm testing their high speed bobbin, which I'll show you in a second. So I was playing with that and playing with that wheel. And yeah, I'm quite happy with it. This is staying with me. I Most woolen spun stays with me just because... You don't feel like it's good enough to give away? Yet. Yeah, I feel like my woolen spun does have definitely... I mean, all my spinning has some bigger sp parts and some smaller parts, but definitely, especially on a different wheel, and I think it'll be a good pair of mitts, or um, I think it'd be really nice striped with like a gray, mm -hmm. for sure. So it might become a scarf or something else. Like one of those um, Noro scarves where you stripe every other row. That might be fun out of that. I have a coworker that's asked for a scarf. So she should definitely hold her breath on that. Um, <laughs> she's nice though. I like her. But I gave a lot of my coworkers hats for Christmas or winter holidays. Yeah. Um, and so she wants a scarf, and I like her, but she's also thinking about switching schools next year, so I don't feel Whether obligated. to put that investment in. <laughs> no, I like her a lot. And then the other thing that I spun was I finally finished the prize for our self -stripe, our last self-striping sock knit along, which was in December. This is Merino from Apothecary Fibers. Apothecary. Apothecary fabrications it's not fibers oh, okay i'm totally wrong it's brand new it's fine merino wool hand dyed fiber she doesn't name her stuff um this is four ounces and it's 300 yards it's really pretty yeah i'm super 
happy with how... I don't mean to sound so how, surprised, but... Well, I'm happy with how the colors came out. I'm not super happy with the spinning. It is nice and... Feel how bouncy it is. Something I love about Merino. Yeah. Is it wants to... The, there's so much crimp in yeah, it. Yeah, it's like elastic almost. And it wants to bounce. Um, that also means that there's a lot of twist in it, which is what's making me... Uh, it's not too bad. Um, it is curling up some. So it does have a lot of twist in it. It's not to the point where it's gotten unsoft, but it would be um, not great for lace. It would be good for something not lace. <laughs> textured. Textured would be perfect. You know because, what I love about you? How specific you are. No, textured would be perfect because that helps that knitting and purling helps um, a ribbed helps like even out twist. But yeah, so this is and it smells like I need to get more of this, that bijou basin. Mm. Allure. Allure wash, yeah. I was kind of hoping they'd be at Madrona, but they won't be. Um it's a so relatively we'll small them. market. Yeah, they go to Estes, so maybe we can get I can con Jess into picking some up for me. Yeah, I can't get that back on there, but I'll we'll send this with it. Um, so this is for a giveaway. Yay. We'll do in a couple minutes. Leslie's going to go ahead and put it in a bag before we lose it. Um, so that's 300 yards. So I'm happy with both of those. And then still on the wheel, on the ladybug. And that was spun on the Lindrum upright. On the ladybug, I started spinning some fiber that I found that's probably some of my oldest fiber. It's Lorna's laces. The, they used to do these 10 ounce packs for socks. Yeah. Well, and, but they're not super wash and they're just like mixed wool. Oh really? Yeah. So, um, how full that bobbin is. So I started spinning and this one's jam packed. It's probably five ounces and this one's not because I've run out of time. Um, and I need to ply tonight for house cup to get any kind of points for this. So I'm going to go ahead and start plying. And then I have probably an ounce left to spin that I'll do at a later date. I might do it as detention for next, like I'll finish spinning it tomorrow and turn it in as detention. This is the new acre works high speed bobbin for shacks. And this one I was spinning in scotch tension with a worsted draft. So it's much smoother than that wool and draft. I love the end of their bobbins. Mm -hmm. I love a good bobbin shot. It's probably hard for y'all to see, but it's super full. It makes me happy. Um, it's probably easier than this one. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, well, they have the same patterns too. That was totally not done on purpose. I do like that sunflower pattern. It's one of my favorites. So I'm going to apply that up tonight and hopefully have some yarn for you guys next time. So that is it for me, period. The end. The end of Laura. What about books? Oh, books. So I finished, I actually finished Magic Strikes, which is Kate Daniels book three. I forgot to update that. Um, and started, will you pass me that tapestry needle? I'm going to weave in my ends while I'm talking. Or while you're talking. Thank you. Um, I finished Kate Daniels book three. I started book four. I think book four is the one where her aunt comes. Yep. So that's actually one of my least favorites. Um, I had just re-listened to Andrea and Raphael's book, which mm -hmm. comes after that, uh, within the past year. So I'm not going to re-listen to that. I'm going to move on to book Five. Um, my public library only has through book six on audio, so I'm going to either have to purchase or do whatever after that, or find another library um, that I have an access card to <laughs> that has the later ones. Or I'll just reread them and not listen to them because um, I have a lot of to I listen to. Okay, coming in. Um, so I've started book four. And I'm like literally maybe 30 minutes in. And then I read all of the Lord of the Magpie series. I had read all three before. And then I read the first spinoff book, which is, um, I liked it. It's kind of like, can you change, do you allow your past to define you? 
um, would be my essential question for that one. Or how much do you you'll allow your past to define you as a human being? Um, so that one was good. And then there's a short story that I read, which had to do with ink magic. Um, and they actually like chop off a piece of their finger and make the, like the writing nib out of their bone and have to use their blood for ink. But it's, um, it's like a sorcerer power. So anyway, um, and there's a full novel that comes based on that afterwards. But I have not started that. Is this all by K.J. Charles? Uh Mm-hmm. Um, I've not started that yet. So, I read, I read the first three, and then the first in the spinoff, and then the short, first short story, well, second one, I guess, which is a short story. And I have the third now to read. Um, Amazon in the U.S. did a deal. If you spent $20 on Kindle books... You got five dollars for free, so I easily spent that twenty dollars on KJ Charles books, and so I have five dollars in credit for the next two weeks for free. So I'll have to think about what I want, um, and I have a digital. I have another dollar from doing delayed shipping mm-hmm. on something, so something obviously non-essential that I had to have from Amazon. I'm trying to remember what I even ordered. <laughs> That's no the idea. game that we play at our house. When I think we, it was dog treats. When we get a package, it's like. What could it be? Yeah, hopefully not anything alive. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it for me. What have you been reading, French? Oh, and we have something exciting that we're going to do tomorrow night, too, that we oh, should yeah. talk about in regards to reading. So, I have also been re-listening to the Kate Daniels books, um, primarily because I needed something I didn't really have to pay a lot of attention to while I was assembling the loom and warping and ripping out and doing it again and all that so I'm on the fifth book where she starts her own agency oh yeah um is it the fifth or the sixth I feel like that's later than that one I mean it's... but there's all those short stories that come in there too oh sorry I'm just gonna pull it magic slays that's the one I'm on um so I'm listening to that. I, I've just given up on the Throne of Glass. I tried to go back to that to, to get through that fifth book, the one that's mostly political. And I, I just don't care. Um, and I, I've gotten to the point where the character is young and the voice is done that way, you know, to portray. she's The narration matches the character, so there's no disconnect there. Yeah. But I've just gotten to a point where... I'm no longer interested in that story. Like, so I, I just, I think I'm done with it. Um, so you're going to skip the last book? Yeah, I think I will. Because if I'm having to push myself to finish the yeah. fifth one, like, I just, I just don't. There's, yeah. there's plenty of, uh, my wish list is a mile long. So, Seriously. Um, did I talk about Tech Witch? I did, yeah. yeah. So all the about stuff Witch. on there is from the previous week. I haven't done a lot of reading this week. You um, saved a lot of baby dragons. So they, there was a there was an event this past weekend on the game that I like to play on my iPad called I know because Merge she dragons. came over and she was playing with it and then um, we had a we did our virtual knit night. Yeah, on Sunday which was tons of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a good time. And um, she showed people her baby dragons there. I think other people are now pa- playing Baby Dragons. I got the great tip from somebody else who plays this. It's called Merge Dragons, for anybody who's curious. But when they do an event, um, you have to clear this board, and in order to do that, you have to harvest like energy, life energy, mana, that sort of thing. And you have to do that by harvesting from like life trees or whatever and you have to do it over and over and over and it takes forever somebody else said oh i just turned my ipad's like um screen dimmer screen saver off or whatever power save off during that event and i make sure that there's only trees that they can harvest from and then i just leave it for an hour and i come back and i'm like that is so brilliant Mm -hmm. so that's what I've been doing. So when I go to Laura's, I usually just leave it open while we watch something and then pick it up at the end. But yeah, I, I just haven't been doing much reading. But on the topic of reading. Yeah, tomorrow, um, 
So I didn't realize that Books on the Square Junior, which is in Oxford, Mississippi, um, Books on the Square is a great independent um, bookstore, and they also have a junior version that I shop at way too much because they always have a lot of great displays of books, and I spend way too much of my own money on my kids' stuff for my kids there. Um, when we're in Oxford, and so... Um, Oxford is um, home to Ole Miss, Ole Miss University yeah. of Mississippi, um, and it's about an hour and a little away from us, depending on traffic. Yeah. Like an hour and 15. You go to Batesville, and then you hang a left, basically. Yeah, so... She, uh, Leah Bardugo, yeah, is it's gonna be there. It's gonna be there, and she's signing copies of her new book. It's Bones of something. It's something of the king. Sorry, we pre-ordered it so that we could. Um, and I'm a terrible librarian, um, and haven't even looked at it for the library yet. Uh, let's see. It is King of Scars. Okay. I was right on the king part. You were. I was completely wrong. But that is not an unusual thing. Um, so she's there, and she's going to do an hour talk, mm -hmm. and then book a book signing. And they also have, like, trivia games and stuff mm -hmm. going on, which I'm not going to participate yeah, in. I would just lose. But I'm going to watch people do um, and it, yeah. probably. So... That is our plan for tomorrow. I'm super excited about that. I can't wait to meet her. I followed her on Instagram for a long, long time. Um, and then I cleared off a lot of authors because I was trying to keep it more knitting centered. And now it's just every, everything's on. Now it's like drag queen, knitting, um, teachers. There's like all sorts of people on yeah. my Instagram, which is great. I love the mix of it. Um, Diversity is amazing, y'all. <laughs> Angie Thomas, I follow her on Instagram. She's the really hate good. You give, yeah, yeah, she's got a new one. Um, so I love the Hate You Give book. Um, yeah, it's been listed on Audible as a featured pre-order for a while. Oh, really? Yeah. So she's. It's actually the Hate You Give has been on the New York Times bestseller list for a hundred weeks. It just wow. hit that this week. So she posted something. Um, so congratulations, to Angie. That is absolutely fabulous. And she's a Mississippi author. She's from Jackson, Mississippi which is also incredible. Um, and she's got a new book coming out next week, I believe. It's like February 4th or yeah, 5th. I can't remember. Um, and whatever Tuesday is, because mm -hmm. books are released on Tuesdays. Do you know why that is? No. I mean, I, kn I knew that they came out on Tuesdays. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I feel like movies do, too. Well, well not like theater movies. DVDs but like, yeah, do. DVDs. And then theater movies usually come out on Fridays. Yeah, or Thursday night, depending on how popular it is. Yeah. Um, so she's got a new one that's in the same neighborhood. So it's got the same setting um, as The Hate You Give. So, like, some of the places are the same. Which my kids are super excited. And some of the faces, you know, there's some familiar right. characters as well. So I'm excited. I have an arc that a friend loaned me to read that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, so that is my weekend's plan is, is I want to read that. And then um, I pre-ordered. I spent some of my own money to pre-order a couple copies. So we'd have them for the library the day that it comes out. Because my kids are super stoked. And I have four copies of The Hate You Give in my library and they still I mean it's been a hundred weeks yeah, since year plus. like yeah over like year two half, years yeah. um because it came out in March so almost two years since it came out and I still have like a 20 kid wait constantly um especially now that the movie's out and the yeah. movie's on DVD as well now so it's just constant. Like, that one, Dear Martin, which I started to read today, um, I got three pages in, so I didn't put it on yeah. here. That one's super popular. Um, All American Boys by Jason Reynolds. Anything by Jason Reynolds is always out. So those are... And any, any Diary of Wimpy Kid. I'm up to 70 copies of Diary of Wimpy Kid in my, in my library, and there's still... Uh, like, a, a 10 book... A 10 person, 10 to 20 person for the new one, so... Um, and there's a new Diary of Wimpy Kid coming out this spring where it's his best friend's version of events. So it's uh, switching that point of view. So that should be good, too. Anyway, enough about books. There's never so, enough about books. <laughs> not in my life. There's never enough time to read all the books that I should be reading. But, yeah. And um, 
ALA, the American Library Association, just released their big awards, like the Newberry and Caldecott and um, Credit Scott King Award and all those came out. And I had read some of them. Um, Front Desk won the Pacific Asian Award that I talked That's about good. on here. Um, the Season of Sticks Malone won um, the Credit Scott King Honor. What else have we talked about that one this year? Um, that might be it. What about our trashy paranormal romance? Did they win any? Card? No, they didn't. Aww. Our male male romances didn't either. I mean, they could have been other. <laughs> but this is but not from the award. ALA. <laughs> not from the ALA uh, Teen Kids Awards. I'm trying um, to think what else won that we've talked about. That I've talked about. I don't think anything else that I've talked about won. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Well, we have um, a giveaway, right, for the Amer. So we have American three. Crafty girl. We have <laughs> two things to pull for, and then I want to show off the other two prizes for um, people who were affected by the government shutdown. Yep. That I pulled, and then the one that's still going on. I think we're gonna pull for that next week. I think in the sh I said in the show notes. So we have the striped socks. Let me get out my phone so we can do random number. And Leslie's gonna pull up Ravelry. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to go down. I'm going to pull up random.org. I'm going to add my Ravelry screen. And Did we ever do the giveaway for that one book? Which book, dear? I don't know. Hold on. Go to the Ravelry group and I will tell you. Also, I forget things. Um, sorry, let's go here. Oh, nautical knits we did. Good. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Another crafty girl. This was, um, about your childhood toys. <gasps> oh! Which were we talking about? The Tamagotchi? Yes! <laughs> Back, my little sister had those and loved them. Yeah, the, it's. I've been walking down memory lane a lot. On oh, this, I had that. The little. People. I totally had that Fisher Price little house thing. Um, I don't know who. I this, had that Rainbow Bright doll too. This old lady doll. Who is this? Mrs. Beasley. I have no idea. Oh, okay. That's seventies. I feel like I maybe. Don't know. What like is it U.S. Yeah, I think it's U.S. Doesn't say. We can Google it later. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so this is, um, t oh, a cabbage patch. <laughs> this girl looks like she's been through some stuff. Aw, with a snagged forehead. Easy, Easy bake, bake oven. oven. Horses. Oh, strawberry shortcakes. Strawberry shortcakes, and that smell. I almost say vintage ones, like redone on Amazon. Did the doll almost... smell? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. And there was an evil pie man that my brother had. All right. So we're choosing between numbers two and 210. Um, that was the last one. And the winner is going to get the skein of gorgeous. Another crafty girl. Another strawberry crafty shortcake girl. yarn. And her worsted weight. And in order to claim this, you have to email me, you don't call me less at gmail.com, and send me your physical mailing address and tell me that you want the strawberry shortcake you want, please. All right, so I need you to pull a number, please, yes. between 2 and 210. Wow, 210. Why is this thing not working? It's going to be um, 20, actually. Sugar. That's pretty. Sorry, it stopped working. Uh, the screen capture did? Yes. Because it's it. so fussy. <laughs> All right. So it was number 20. 20? Mm-hmm. All right. So that's it's on, the, be on first the first page. page. A lot of people had that. Oh, Chatty you know. Kathy. Oh, that's cool. Knitting Mama, Mama 3, 3 with an N-I-T-T-I-N Mama 3 from, from Newton, Newington, Kentucky. Connecticut. Connecticut. Where am I? Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Connecticut. 
Um, so yeah, um, Suzanne, I believe. Yep, Suzanne. So email me at you don't call me less at gmail dot com. Yep. And give me your physical address, and we will get the skein of yarn out to you. And thank you to everybody who definitely participated. And um, Punky, ha- well, um, she's closed for February signups, but she'll have March's signups for that club mm-hmm. going on soon. So then we have to give away self striping thread. Oh, do we? Yep. The green yarn that I just spun. Okay, let me. We haven't actually pulled for that yet. I'll do this a third time. <laughs> Could you? Third time is a charm. All right. Um, let me go over here. Okay. Yeah, because clicking on there, it's not going to do much. All right. We'll go to the discussions. And what am I pulling? Um, it's the December SS okay. FO thread. So it's between, between two, two and 12. 12. That's easy. That's going to be five. They, you guys can't see can't me, see but it that. says five. Uh... Oh, oh, sorry. Don't leave that group. I flipped the wrong thing. <laughs> That'd be funny if I left my own group. So this is Hazy Summers. Yeah. Um, and she kept up with the challenge. Did she knit all of them? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's pretty awesome. We need to do a, another prize. I know. I need to go through the people who knit them all. So this is Hazel. And I have no idea where Hazel is, but... Um, Hazel, you have won the skein of hand spun yarn. Hazy, Hazy Summers. Go back to her profile. It said something about Bangladesh. Ghana. Awesome. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, super cool. We'll be sending some um, <laughs> yarn spun to, to Ghana. Ghana. That's pretty amazing. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to make a note here hand spun winner. Apothecary. Uh, green apothecary. Cool. So that way I don't forget. And we have a giveaway going on for people who were affected by the government shutdown. Mm-hmm. And Laura's um, already picked out her three things. I'm going to pick out three things as well. Yeah. So what's up right now, and we'll draw for this next week, is a Miss Babs Gradient set. So before we get de- detailed into this, okay. this is for anybody who has someone in their household, themselves or someone else in their household, that were affected by the government shutdown. Yep. You don't have to prove anything to us. We're yep. going on the honor system. Um, and what was the question that you asked to enter? I just said that you could say anything. You could say oh, here, okay. whatever. Cool. Um, so, but if they wanted to give me Booker podcast or TV show suggestions. Cool. Always appreciated. So this is Perseus. It's a, mass, a Miss Babs gradient set. It's 798 yards. So that's going to be the first one. And then um, let's see. I have some Volmiza. Mm. And the We're Different. It looks like a Miss May. Uh, Mouse Ballet is what oh, the okay. person thought it was. Just like trying to yeah. peel up and see. Um, and it's a twin base. So it's got the nylon in it. Yep. The wool nylon. So it's that nice bright pink. And it's like 512 yards or something like that. Yep. And then I have some sport weight, another crafty girl, which I love Mm -hmm. her stuff. And this is in the socks solo colorway. Um, and it's a sport weight. Perfect for doing socks. 328. It's got a nice tight twist and it's super pretty. It's nice and round. I like her yarns. I do as well. So we'll pull for that next week. When uh-huh. We record next time we record, which should be next week. Yeah, we'll put up the other two yeah. in the. Th- we'll start while the video is encoding. I'll go through my stash and pick out a few options. Yeah, and we'll add some. Add. Well, do you want to pull all from that one thread, or do you want to start separate a separate thread for the rest of them? Because I just put the Perseus one up in the first thread. I think we should just do it all in one thread. I think okay, the, we can it change. Would just confuse the issue if we. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'll uh, add pictures and stuff and such. Hopefully, if you entered for the Perseus and you win something else, you won't be upset. Um, you've got another. You've got a week. Yeah. To enter too, if you haven't entered. From um, this point on. So there's 
that. We'll be a Madrona in two weeks, which yep. is super exciting. Saturday we'll be taking a class, but we should be walking around Friday. Oh, do we need to order pens for that? Is, is that something that you wanted to do? Yeah, we probably should do that. I'm just going to open the four print page then. Because <laughs> that's where we That way I don't from. forget. Yeah. Um, and then I think that's it. I think so too. Yeah, we're going to leave the link to the race and knitting discussion on Ravelry linked in the bottom for quite a while yeah. because it's an ongoing discussion. So it's good for it's people to be able to read. Yeah. All right. So you guys have a lovely weekend and we will see you next week. Bye y'all. Bye y'all.